So um, greetings, everyone, and, and welcome to the International Council for Small Business ICSB Exchange webinars. And my name is Ayman Tarabishi. I am the president and CEO of uh, ICSB. I am delighted to have you all here joining us today. And it'll be a fantastic event. So what I'd like to do is first share my slides with all of you and then get to officially start the session. So just give me a second. I'll go here and then officially start uh, the slide. Let me go here. And then, and so I'm gonna go share screen. And I see, where do I see my slides? Um, one second. Um, for some reason, I don't see them. One second. Um, but here they are. I see the slides. Okay, let me close this and then open this up. Okay, and then I'm going to go back here. I'm just going to share my slides. Here they are. And um, do you all do you all see my slides, everybody? All good to go. Very good. Yes. Yes, yes. Wonderful, great. Okay, so let me just make him a big screen here and we'll, uh, we'll start the slideshow. Okay, so again, um, welcome everybody to the International Council for Small Business. And this webinar is on the Journal of Small Business Management. Um, I am delighted to have you all here joining us here and greetings from all over the world, wherever you are here. Again, my name is Ayman Tarabishi. I'm the president and CEO of ICSB. I'm also a deputy chair of the Department of Management, and I'll be leading this session today. And a little bit about the Journal of Small Business Management. Let me go to the next slide here. Is um, I would like to introduce the JSBM leadership team. And as being president and CEO of ICSB, I am also the editor in chief of JSBM. And, and uh, I want to thank Dr. George Solomon, the previous editor in chief of JSBM. Uh, I am now the new uh, JSBM. Um, Editor in chief, I would like to also introduce and 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 uh, to you all and um, are my two co-managing editors of JSBM, and the first is um, Dr. Katia Passerini. She is the provost at Seton Hall, and so she sends her regards. Unfortunately, she is busy at Seton Hall, and also Dr. Eric Liguiri, the the second co-managing editor of the JSBM, and unfortunately he had an emergency today to rush to, so he was planning to join us, but he will join us again in the next um, series here. The Journal for Small Business Management, or JSBM, is a part of the International Council for Small Business. So it's part of our portfolio of journals and products and services. We have another journal that we'll talk about a little bit later here called GISP, which is the Journal of the International Council for Small Business. I think most of you are familiar with JSBM, and JSBM has been and around for quite some time. We are very proud and, and, and we're excited about JSBM. It is, we say it is the oldest and, uh, and largest circulated journal in the world focusing on small business management and entrepreneurship. And we're all over the world. We have, we have a lot of great followers to it. We have some excellent submissions from a lot of people throughout the years here. So it's, so it's, it's very prestigious and we're very honored. ICSB is very honored to have it, I am extremely pleased with it. I'm extremely pleased with the journal itself, where, where it has been, where it is now, and where it's heading here. So we are just delighted. And we have fantastic and absolutely hardworking co-managing editors. Uh, Dr. Eric Liguiri has done an incredible job in putting the journal um, together as we transition, and Katia Pasolina as well. Uh, I also want to thank um, the previous managing editor, um, manager of the JSBM, uh, Sergio D'Onofrio, um, um, a fantastic friend at George Washington University. He's done a great job with the journal with George Solomon. I also want to thank um, some people might know, and um, as well, the previous manager of JSBM, Michael Battaglia, as well, that worked for ICSB. A, a fantastic and absolutely great person that really helped to transition JSBM where it was and bring it to GW. So I want to thank both Personally, first, Sergio D'Onofrio for his great effort and work with JSBM and GISP. I also want to thank Michael Battaglia as well for his great work. And also, I want to thank the leadership of uh, George Solomon as a, as a managing editor of um, JSBM previously here. So JSBM, as I mentioned to you, is around the world. We are very excited and proud to say that we are really global journal here. And um, with that, I want to also um, announce, and we've been this now for a while here, 
and close to seven or eight months here, is that our publisher for the journal, for JSBM, and also for our new journal, just is uh, Taylor and Francis, and they're absolutely great, fantastic to work with, and really good to work with, very receptive, very open to ideas, and they are partnered with us here, and they have done a great job, and, and I'm just delighted to, uh, to thank them all, and Tom Conway, Michelle, and, and all of them, Vicky, all of them have done just a great, great job with both journals here. And let me go a little bit about JSBM facts, uh, fast facts, things that, um, that we, 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 we talk about when we talk about JSBM. And, and Eric has an incredible job and in putting this, um, this quick sheet, quick fact sheet together for all of you here, for you all to see here. And we, we're, we're a very highly competitive journal and uh, compared to other journals here. We accept from eight to 10% acceptance rate. I know that's even going down even more because um, it was last month, we, were, we talked about that we're getting a lot of submissions here and we actually have to even be more selective with this journal. So these numbers are, are what I call are in between as we even become more competitive and, and our acceptance rates is probably gonna go down more just because of the fact is that we're getting more submissions here. Right, and, and that's, 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 I believe, and I told this to Katya and Eric, that's a, that's a good problem to have, and to actually realize that we are growing incredibly, the quality is increasing wonderfully here, and, and people are really responding for ideas and, and the call for the journal here. So that's kind of where we are with the acceptance rate. And we are getting about 800 submissions a year, uh, papers coming into us, so imagine that and 800 submissions, and this number keeps going up for us. You know, we keep seeing increase day to day increase. And the new manager for JSPM, right, and, and keeps saying that every morning she opens up her email and there's more submissions coming in, much more than we expect. So, and, you know, for us, this is something alarming for us, but also we realize we're doing the right thing. We, we're, we're, we're on the path of doing something wonderful here. I wanna thank all of you. So if you have submitted to the journal, in the past or currently or are planning to, just to say, we wanna say on behalf of ICSB, Katya, Eric, and I, thank you. Thank you for your wonderful job here. And our, our impact factor, which is kind of our measure, our metrics of, of are we doing the right thing and have we been doing the right thing? And I want to say, I wanna thank and give a lot of credit to, uh, to George Solomon, the previous associate editors, and, and everybody that was, uh, was working with JSBM in the past, Absolutely, they were doing a fantastic work and putting together a, a roadmap as we move forward here. And our impact factor, and our impact factor has been up consistently year over year. Now we're at 3.641 for 2019. So this is uh, this is an excellent number here. Um, but rest assured, um, this is this is where we are now. And with our plan, with with our vision, where where I want to take this journal this is just the starting point and our ambition is extremely high here and and we're, we're gearing up for this we're, put, we're spending a lot of time and effort planning this as as we increase it so we, we are on a growth plan we are we're an upward plan here and we are planning for this so stay tuned because we we have a lot of things happening as we as we continuously improve and and and, and scale up our journal to be the premier journal in the globe in the world, right? And, and that's, um, that's straight up front. This is exactly where I'm going with this journal here. And we, we are three ranking in ABS list. And so you know where exactly I'm thinking about this. And we are an A minus, A minus ranking in ABDC list. Again, these are great numbers. These are fantastic here, but this is the starting point. And for, for me and for my managing editors here, we know that this is what we have inherited and this is where we're gonna take it from onward here. And we are in the top 10 journal for technology and innovation. And, and so again, an excellent metric here, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful global distribution and readership in 60 plus countries. I wanna again thank Taylor and Francis for the incredible work. One of the main reasons we joined them here is their reach, their, their professionalism and their capacity to move us forward here. So again, we're gonna move this forward, both uh, hard copy and also online where we see the future is, right? And we are inclusive, both in aims and scope. And we, we, we focus on small business and entrepreneurship 
and, and we're looking at, the, at, at our thematic areas that we get a lot of interest in, and, and they are over here. But one thing I want to stress here, one thing that what I am proud of, and, and we, we stuck to our guns, we stuck to our, to our roots, our history here, our, 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 our privileged history here, is that we continue to focus on small business. We continue to focus on micro businesses, right? While other journals might have gone in different directions here, we stayed root, we stay true and, and, and loyal to our roots. And, and the title and the journal will remain the same, the Journal for Small Business Management. And we'll always continue and be proud of this. So that's a little bit about our, our fast facts about the JSBM. And I'm gonna just quickly go here to, uh, to look at the, the questions, if there's any here. Let me just quickly see if I can do this while I'm presenting. Um, um, right, thank you, yep, that's impressive. Thank you very much, Mohammed, and everybody here for this. But again, as I mentioned to you, um, we are ambitious. <laughs> so, um, so you know where we're gonna be heading with this. Um, let me go to the next slide here. Um, right, this is, and, and we, we put this together, actually, Eric did a wonderful job um, in putting together. He is actually superb at putting these plans together for us, right? And so he put this just to show you kind of our roadmap. What's, what's, how do we operate? How does it work? And I, I believe a lot of people don't know. <laughs> a lot of people are aware there's a process in place, but what is this process and how does this work and, and where do I fit in and what happens when I get a letter or what happens when I don't get a letter? And you know, so, so part of us for, for transparency and for clarity and making sure that everybody knows what we do and how you can help us be better, right? We put, we put these steps together, these five steps together, and we put them in categories and then the action items. So, so you understand that this is what happens when you're late at night at one o'clock in the morning, right? Working on your paper and you, you spend a lot of time and effort and you went to conferences and you asked for feedback and you, you got more feedback that you don't like and, and stuff. And then finally, you finally feel like I'm gonna take this paper of mine that I spent all my effort in and my aspiration here, it ties to my tenure, it potentially becoming tenure, it ties to my reputation as a researcher, it ties to what my colleagues think of me. There's a lot of emotion invested when you submit a paper. It is not something you just do off the cuff type of thing. I want to answer this. I want to tell you, this is what we do when you submit your hard earned paper that you really worked hard in, right? And we try to, and I, and I stress this as, as a, as a managing editor, we need to be better on every single one. We need to continuously look and revise and review how to be better. So when you submit it, it comes to our administrative review, right? So we, we look at the, we, the actions we take is the formatting, right? The blindness of it, right? Is it, did your name slip in somewhere in the paper where it can trigger something here? So we need to make sure that it's done. We, we review the file. We, we review the originality of it, the authenticity of it, right? And we review the, the quality of the paper here, right? 800 submissions is a lot, and especially when we have limited capacity to submit here. So for us, this is a major filtering system for us to see what really is worth the time and effort to take it then to the next level, right? So that's what we do. It goes through this process here. Did it, did it pass through these items here? Right, and, and we tell people, spend some time. And, and, and I tell you, one of the major issues that we tell people right off the bat here, don't feel that you have to rush a submission in, right, just because you feel like somebody is pressing you to submit it right away, that you're in a race, right? If you, if you waited three months to write it, it's okay to wait another month, go give it to an editor to review the quality of the writing. You know, somebody can, can copy edit this. Make sure that your, your English is proficient, even though your English might not be your first language. So if you're in from another country and you're writing as best as you can, and you think you're a good writer in, 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 in English, right? Right, and you write it, well, guess what? There's another person that's writing from another country that his or her first language is English, that they learn how to write it from grade school. And they're submitting a paper, maybe close to your idea, or maybe not, but it's written better in English. Well, here you go, you have an obstacle here saying when we get it from the administrative review, we look at it saying, is this something that we understand from, 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 from a written perspective here? 
So what I recommend to you as, as a managing editor here, if English is not your first language, and if you're not 100% sure that you, you, this paper can pass to what I call just a standard good written people here, go spend some time and get it edited. Okay, go find a professional editor and say, can you please review this for grammar, for syntax, for flow, for tone, right? And, and look at some examples of how the other papers were written here. Because once you do this, then you can say to yourself, formatting, I got covered because the system will tell me if I've done that. Blindness review, I'm sure that there's nothing there in it that well, I'll, I'll trigger my name here thinking that if I throw my name in, they're gonna be smiling at me. We're not gonna be smiling at you if we see your author's name in the paper here, right? We're gonna review the file to make sure there's nothing corrupted in it. And we're gonna authenticate it to see if it, this is paper you submitted somewhere else or not. And if you're trying to do double dipping on it. So we say, hold on a minute, you submitted this somewhere else. Why are you sending it here again? Right, we, we, we can know this, there's systems there for this. And finally, we're gonna look at it saying, does this make sense from a flow, from just an, a quick review, is this good, written English or not. Once that happens, once the administrative review happens and you pass these action items, then we go to managing editor review. Okay, and this is where it goes to the second level here. Those have done that have done paper reviews, have done the reviews before, have seen so many papers, they know the standard and the quality here. Right? They're gonna look at the aims and the scope of the review. They're gonna look at the cover letter. They're gonna look at the overall manuscript review and they're gonna look at the associate editor assignment. We're gonna figure this all out here, okay? One thing, and, and I mentioned this to you all, just to be here, do not underestimate your cover letter, okay? One thing that you should really pay attention to is the cover letter that you're sending to the editors, okay? Why your paper? What is it about your paper that stands out? Okay, so don't think just because you wrote 15 pages or 20 pages of a great research study, that we see it the way you see it. What we look at is your cover letter and what does your cover letter tell us? Why do you stand out? Okay, and, and I teach entrepreneurship, you know, and, and some of you probably have heard of this, right? It's called the elevator pitch. You have three minutes to grab my attention. You have three minutes to convince me there's something about this, right? A lot of people underestimate the power of a cover letter. I urge you all to spend some time on this and give it equal credence and equal importance, including the introduction, <laughs> similar to the cover letter is your first, you know, your, your little abstract or your first page explaining the paper here, right? You, you have to show us why this, what makes this difference. If you understand that we have 800 papers coming in, okay, and it will be blindly reviewed, right? Then once that happens, and once we assign the associate editor's assignment to it, it goes to the associate editor review, which exactly what I said to you here, the cover letter review, the overall manuscript review, and the peer review assignment. Now, now it's going into production. Now it's going into the review process in which now you, you see the amount of work that we have done just receiving the paper, right? How we went through it here, right? And once we go through the associate editor review here, it goes to the peer review, right? They review the manuscript line by line. They read it, they send some time. It's blind review. They, they do a matrix scoring on it. So there's a science behind the matrix scoring here. They do a numerical scoring on it. They, they write, they write feedback that's generated for it and a publication recommendation. And, and that's tough, all right? Because every, every reviewer will do this and, then it, and, and they go through all of this. Some go very extensive, some go less extensive here. We try to figure out, we, we have our system to see who's doing extensive reviews, who's not doing extensive reviews, and we track it just to give everyone a fair shot. That's what we kind of really do because everybody should have a fair, fair shot with a journal like JSBM, okay? And we go through all of this and then we go back to the associate editor decision, right? And they, they have to make some difficult decisions, right? They, they look at the, what the peer reviews have said, the two or three of them, it's actually double blind review. So they look at two reviews here, right? And they look at the manuscript and then they sit down and they spend some time making a decision. Now, when both reviewers come back saying, this is great paper, submit it, it's an easy path, right? But imagine some of the challenges you have when somebody says to you, no, this is, this is not really good, reject the paper. And somebody says, oh, accept the paper. Now you have mixed messages, 
Okay, why did someone feel so strong to reject the paper and someone felt so strong to accept the paper? Okay, so the associate editor will actually have to go through the comments, review the paper, spend some time on it, reflect on it, see what they think, think what they have done in the past, and, and they have to make, make a decision. Okay, and each associate editor has their own way of doing it. It's up to them to make these decisions here, right? We, we trust them to make these decisions. Okay, and we trust them because we, them in the past, and the journal has been improving every year. So we believe that the decisions they have made, have been making, have also improved our journal. And that's what, and then once that all goes through and you go with the review, and then let's say it's a review, uh, revise and resubmit, then it goes through the whole process again of review, right? And it can go back and forth a couple of times. We hope less, to be honest with you, because it, it, go, it takes more time and it takes more effort. And, and the suspense of waiting for this letter coming in or not, that's also something very important here. We try to keep it as much as possible within the timeline. We can track these things and Eric has done an incredible job making sure that everybody gets notice when they're supposed to get notice. That's a priority for us, right? That's something that we stress now with technology, with people, with, with all what's going on here. Let's keep to time as best as possible. So we work on behalf of the submitter, making sure that the associate editors and the reviewers get it in time. But you also have to understand, nobody's getting paid for this. You know, the peer reviewers are not getting paid for this. The associate editors are not getting paid for this. So they do this as a volunteer basis. And that's just, we have to acknowledge this and really respect them and say a big thank you here. Because on top of their work, on top of what they're trying to publish, school, home, life, kids, whatever it is, they're doing this on a volunteer basis. And we have to recognize this and, and give, them, give them credit for this great work that they're doing here. So that's JSBM's five-step manuscript review system. And, we, and as I mentioned to you earlier, we continuously review this. I, I made sure, I told Eric and to make sure that we go through this step-by-step step and see what, what's working, what's not working, and what we need to improve. And he's done an incredible job with this. I want to thank him personally for doing a wonderful job with this. Let me go to the next slide real quick. Right here. Here are some of the things that 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 Eric has shared with us that we know about that 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 are just that should not happen. Okay, and 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 these are easy easy um, um, things that we flag here, right? That we say, well, come on now, this is not fair. This paper comes in, and we know right off the bat it has a very low chance of getting even going to the next part here. It's concerns of originality. It's not original, right? You're, you're, you're doing the same thing as somebody else did. So the, the novelty of it is not there, okay? So we're saying, well, it's, it's not original in the sense it's other people did. So why, why this? Why are you saying that this is so important to create new knowledge for this journal, right? And, and so that's something that we look at here. So sometimes the question that you need to ask you saying here, you know, it goes back to your literature review. It looks back to a lot of things saying, what are other, what is being published out there and where is this going? And what is it that I am doing, right? That, may, that fits this originality thing. It's, it's tricky. I understand it's tricky. And you can always make a proposition for it. That's why I mentioned to you the cover letter. That's why I mentioned to you the introduction here to, to talk about this, to saying, hey, this is why I, I, I think this passes originality here, right? The other one here is the, the weak topical alignment. You know, and I, I, you, you, you're submitting to, to a journal that talks about small business and entrepreneurship, and you're, and you're talking about a topic totally different than our focus, including it can be on anything, but has no relationship to micro, small businesses, entrepreneurs, you know, nascent entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurial teams, you name it. We, we just see it as, as a stand, it's, it's great for another journal that is more aligned with that topic. Okay, so yes, you want to submit to us, but you have to make sure that it fits our topical alignment and we list them on our website and there's so many of them here. So just make sure that it's there. Even if you think it's not clear enough, I would recommend you to make it clear. Okay, right, and, 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 and I, I wanna give examples, but if I'm afraid if I give an example saying, why did you pick on us? And then I'll get an email from saying, hey, that's not fair, you picked on us type of thing. So I'm gonna withhold my, my topical alignment here. But you have to understand, make it 
relational in that sense. Make it sure that you understand that, give us a reason saying, yes, it fits under the JSBM universe. Um, failure to follow submission guidelines. The, this is an easy trip here. You, 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 you put your name in the paper where you're not supposed to put it there. You didn't follow the page count. You sent us, you know, we asked for this amount, you sent us double the pages, um, right? Then um, we think this is just a non-starter for us. You think that's why we create these guidelines and we spend time on them. And um, significant lack of rigor, theoretical or methodology. You're, you're writing us a great article, but that's, it's not a research paper, okay? It's an opinion piece. It, it's, a, it's a piece uh, talking about your experiences about things, right? There is other venues for this, and there's other um, platforms where you can share these ideas and, and your views on things and, and ideas, but not for JSBM. And this is an academic journal. This is a journal that gets cited. This is a journal for, for, for research, right? Um, prior or concurrent consideration, you know, it's, you. That's very clear here, how that moves forward here. So these are common causes for, for, for desk rejections here. So these are things you should avoid extremely here, just to say, I have a fair shot. But I also want to remind you here is, and I keep stressing this here because we are a global organization and we have submissions from around the world. I stress for my colleagues and my partners from around the world, we know English is not your first language. Spend some time making sure that you review it from that perspective, okay? It's an easy, easy way of doing it, especially today, where it's much easier to find editors online that, 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 that that's their job, is to just edit papers and, and clean them up for grammar and English and syntax and stuff. So spend some time with them, get it done, and then submit it here. Um, let me go to the next slide. Let me see if I have this right. Um, best practices for JSBM submission, right? Um, I know Eric is kind of funny with this, avoid the avoidable desk rejections. So step one, don't fall. Don't make the same mistake. We just told you, don't go, don't do it. You don't want to spend, send it and then within a week you get, or less than a week you get a letter saying, sorry, it's desk rejected because your name was on page three type of thing, you know, or you know what we see, it, we see, we see from an authentication perspective, this paper was submitted to this journal and it shows it at 80%. So we're not going to do it. Um, Eric now st stresses this, don't underestimate the importance of the letter to the editor, okay? Um, Eric looks at them and, and, you know, and Katya looks at them, and, you know, I look at them sometimes here. So you have to understand that something we pay attention to because it's our way to connecting with you. Um, get the introduction right. And I, I, I like the way he says it, get the introduction right. What I say to you is nail the introduction. Make sure you, you spend a lot of time on the introduction just to make sure they're saying, Oh, uh, you know, I would say is like, you get it online and, and you're, you're kind of a little bit, you're going to start looking at it and, and you're going to be easily distracted. You start reading it and then you're going to start looking away a little bit. At that point, you just need to understand, nail it right there. Show them the hook, why this, okay? And so people will be like, okay, hold on. I'm going to put my coffee down now and I'm going to look at this more, right? Confirm, you know, conform to best practices for research, design, data collection, and analysis, right? The question is, how do you do this? Well, how do you do this, right? How do I conform to it? Go look at some papers that have been published, right? In the same area that you are writing on. Look how ha they have written it. Look how they have structured it. Look at how they attack the topic and the research and saying, I have the form now, right? This is my form. This is how it got published. So I'm going to follow this form. I'm going to see if what I write comes close to this in terms of quality, form, structure, you know, cadence, right? And see how it fits. If it's not even close to it saying, well, you know, I'm deviating a little bit here because people are, people are comfortable looking at this, right? Because if you are a reviewer and you see something all over the map, right? You're not paying attention to what is being said you're paying attention to how it's being structured. And that basically will make you feel uneasy, okay? And when you feel uneasy, you know right off the bat that the reviewer will say, I don't know. <laughs> why, the question is, why haven't they followed normal procedures? Why haven't they followed the same path as anybody else? Why, why make it so complicated, right? So, and, 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 and at the end, and this is something that I've mentioned my colleague, Jeff Alves here, and 
right, uh, the editor in chief of um, GISP, he says, what's the practical value, right? So let me let me explain this to you. Uh, I'm a little bit getting a little bit older here, right? So I lived this I I, I lived this uh, this experience here, right? Uh, from my mentor and other researchers here, it started with the art of asking the right questions, right? What is the research question that you're asking? The beauty in asking the right research question has enormous value, right? What, what about that research question that will make stop, everybody stop and think and saying, wow, that's just a really neat question, right? And for a while, for a long period of time, the, the, the elegance, the, the relevance of asking the right research question was critically important. And then for some reason, and this is my personal opinion, for some reason, we, we deviated from this and we got so focused on how to do the statistical analysis, right? And all the bells and whistles of statistical analysis that, are, that have been very prevalent and recent and, and exciting to see them, right? Uh, SEM, you name it, there's so many of them out there that people are using now that they are just magnificent. Sometimes I get lost just to follow through on all the theoretical statistical analysis that's being done there, right? And people got very excited to show how powerful it is that using statistical analysis that you can make excellent arguments about things. And, and I feel the gap then happened here a little bit where eventually we started paying more attention to how we do statistical analysis than asking the right questions or asking the piercing questions that make us pause, right? And for a while I thought this is where we shifted towards, right? But I am delighted and I have to say this and I've been seeing it in a lot of places here is that we're going back to asking these questions, right? Asking, asking the, the hard questions, the questions that just make us stop and struggle saying, I don't know how we can even approach this. And the statistical analysis follows, complements the research question here. So that's something I stress. I think Eric stressed it as well. And that's why he said the cover letter, because in the cover letter, I hope you're not gonna show off how much statistical analysis you're gonna do, but you're gonna really focus on why this research question is of importance, right? And this is where my, hold on one second, let me just, better. Um, and this is where my colleague, Dr. Jeff Alves would say, at the end of the day, at the end of all the path you've taken us, the whole story you've taken us, at the end, the question he asks, so what? <laughs> so what, really, so what you've done all of this? That's great, that's fantastic. So the so what question, because he wants the practical value of it. What can we take away from this? Right? And this is a big deal for academia now, especially with, with COVID, post-COVID here, is what does our research tell us on how to move forward, right? How can we take this research and apply it for our future, right? And my colleague Winslow Sargent would say, you know, and he picked it up from somewhere else, he would say, there is BC and AC. And I asked him, I said, so what do you mean BC and AC? He goes, before Corona, after Corona, right? And so I wanna thank him for this because that's really what we're looking at after Corona. What is this great practical value of the, of the publications you're submitting to JSBM and where is this taking us? So something that you wanna pay attention to at the end of the paper and the summary and the conclusion and next steps here to saying, we hear you, we hear you JSPM, we hear you ICSB. You want to tell us what's the practical value of this paper. We hear you, Eric, we hear you. Ayman, I know you're gonna come ask me this question. Here it is. And Katya is gonna look at you with this, with this glare and saying to you, explain to me exactly what this means. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna upset Katya because she's gonna ask you a lot of questions. So just to let you know, <laughs> right? So that's the best practices here for JSB and manuscripts of mission. Um, this is our journal, right? We are, we are all proud of it. This is not, um, this journal has been touched by so many brilliant minds, by so many wonderful people from around the world. And this is your journal. This is the journal of the ICSB family here. And Eric, Katya, and Hannah, Michael, Sergio, George Solomon, everybody else that ever was involved in this journal, uh, put time and effort and, and, and really worked hard in it. And we are very proud of this. And 
we, we, we are excited about it. We are excited about everything about it here. And, 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 and we, we wish you all to submit to it. This is an exciting time to submit to it. And we, we are in a huge growth plan. We are, I am extremely ambitious with this journal and everybody around us are extremely ambitious as well. And, but we want creativity, we want innovation, we want due diligence, hard work. We want you to give us complex problems to solve with your research questions. And we're gonna shake our heads and saying, oh my God, that's, that's a tough paper, right? These are tough questions. And we'll be like, let's take it and, and ask it to our partners around the world, how do we address these research questions? Um, I'll stop sharing here. I wanna show you the website just to make sure that, um, that I can share the website with you. Let me see if I can share the website with you as well. Um, where is this website? One second, uh, everybody. Um, okay, one second. All right, let me just pull it up on my website. Hold on. Let me see if I have it on my website. Um, yep, it's here, but so I need to show it here. Um, yeah, here it is. And then I'll share this computer sound. And I hope you all see the, um, this is R on icsb.jsbm.org. It's a global benefit for all our members. Here is our website. which can make it with us here. And I want to thank him again for preparing these slides for, uh, for us today, right? We have Katia Passerini and the managing editor. We have Hannah as well, Gilroy, and, and it's me um, and doing this webinar here. I want to thank you all. Here's a little bit about our journal and I want to maybe show this, this video. Let's see if I can show this video for everybody. Let me see if I do this right, okay. I also would like to invite the researchers, the ones that are focusing on entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs, small businesses, micro businesses, to come and share your research on two journals of ICSB. The first journal, the oldest and largest journal worldwide, is titled the Journal for Small Business Management, JSBM. We invite you to upload your manuscripts, your research to this journal. And rest assured, our extensive associate editors and reviewers from around the world will review your manuscript and to see if it's publishable in our peer-reviewed journal. We thank Taylor and Francis for hosting both of our journals for this. We have the state-of-the-art system for uploading and reviewing. So JSBM is one of our flagship journals. And then I am personally excited with the second journal the Journal of the International Council for Small Business. This journal is headed by Dr. Jeffrey Alves, the editor of the journal. This is a unique type of journal. This is a different type of journal. This journal intersects policy, research, and education together. Imagine that. You can talk about policy and you can publish it in research and education. You can talk about case studies and bring it to the journal to just to be published. This is a new journal, a new type of way of thinking. Okay, so I'll um, start, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, here is a little bit about uh, our, um, the, the bios of our speaker, of our uh, managing editors here. Here is JSBM, right? And here's a little bit about Katya and Eric and Hannah, right? And then our special issue, right? And you can visit our, our journal at, um, at JSBM. So, I'll stop sharing here. So now you all have me. I see we have about a um, nice group of people joining us here. And let me see if there's any questions and answers here. I, I'd be interested to know what kind of information is useful to put in a cover letter in order to give you a paper the best chance of going beyond desk review. Okay, so Rachel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take um, an, a, an answer to this just so you see where I'm coming from, okay? And this is, again, my, my personal opinion, right? So this is how I would see it, Eric will see it differently, and Katya will see it here. But let's let's pick a topic, right? Let's pick a topic on um, 
entrepreneurial orientation, EO, okay? So if you just go to any of the journals, other journals there, or even you search of it, and you type in entrepreneurial or orientation, EO, you would see, I would say, maybe thousands of papers on the topic of EO, entrepreneurial orientation, okay? So right off the bat, you know, we get it, and other people get it, we say, okay, here's another paper, another research paper on the topic of entrepreneurial orientation that is coming in to talk about it. There are papers that did meta-analysis on EO. There's papers that are done that talked about EO from different angles, from, from non-profits to for-profits. They looked at papers from EO, meaning from different countries here. So we know this, right? We understand this. We, we can research it ourselves here. So then what makes your paper different than another paper on EO coming in, right? Or self-efficacy or, 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 your, or, your, or intentions, right? And you name it. So right off the bat, we're saying to you, you need to differentiate this saying, well, here's, here's why this paper about EO is a little bit different, right? And you say right up front, saying, I know you know, but let me tell you why this is different. And then we say, okay, that's her position. And, and that's where we say, okay, well, fair enough. Everything is transparent. She knows we know. She's going to tell us why it's different. And, and, and so we say, okay, and what is it then, the impact on this on JSBM? Why is this important for JSBM? This is where the topical area coming in. Saying because EO, EO, and here's my argument for you here, all right? And I'm just going to say this. And again, somebody's going to argue with me saying, no, that's not true, but just for the sake of opinion here, right? EO is, 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 is a corporate measure. You measure the entrepreneurial orientation of an organization, okay? And therefore, you need to solicit feedback from the top level management of an organization. And that's how it's constructed. So therefore, yes, that works, but let's just be, let's be a little bit realistic here. You know, for small businesses or micro businesses, the top management is one person, right? The decision making is maybe two people, right? So what are you really measuring with you? Are you measuring the construct of the whole organization or are you really measuring the, 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 what this entrepreneur or owner thinks of? Complex, interesting. Right, so what is it? What is the unit of analysis? The individual, or is it an org level measure? Do, Rachel, do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> right. Now, now, I said this, and I'm warning you. I'll probably get six emails saying, "I'm in." There's research done on this, and this is how it was done. <laughs> right. So, but again, then, then you better say, "And yes, there was research on this, and these are the six papers that were done in it." But I want to take it from a different perspective. Okay, that's what I mean. Right. And do I accept papers on e-commerce in the context of absolutely? If you look at e what is the capability of e-commerce in emerging markets in the area of small business and micro businesses? You know, I was on a and I was on a webinar with my colleagues from Uganda the other day. It was at four o'clock in the morning. I was actually on a webinar at four a.m. because I promised them, and they were talking about e-commerce e capability in Uganda and how they need to move forward with it because that's the future trend in Uganda. Great, great research topic. But see what's out there. See what's actually being done on it as well. Any other comments or questions so far? Then, did, did that give you a feel for it a little bit? Okay, let me see if there's any chat section. Sorry, I, I pulled up the chat. Yeah, yeah, really helpful. Absolutely. Um, right. So, there's also our other journal here, GISP. Now, GISP, I'm going to talk. Let me see if I can pull up GISP here because some of you might like GISP. Oh, let me see. Oh, um, let me uh, pull up GISP here. One second, everyone. We still have some time. Let me pull up GISP here. Um, and and I, I, this is our next journal. Okay, good. It's up. Let me now share the screen here. Um, okay, so here's GISP. So this is the other journal here. I know we're talking about JSBM, but I'm going to talk a little bit about GISP. So GISP is our brand new journal, right? So it's JSBM is our, was our premier journal. Now ICSB is excited to have two premier journals with, with, our, with our colleagues from Taylor and Francis. Absolutely great, great, wonderful work that they're doing here. So our journal here is about GISP. I'm not going to show you the video because I already showed you this here. But GISP is a little bit interesting here in the sense that GISP, right, um, has, has a different take on it in the sense of um, that we, we, we allow for more innovation on this. So 
we, we tied this journal a lot to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 SDG goals, but we're looking for, because Jeff Alves is the managing editor of this, he's looking more for a practical, looking for a more a high impact, what does this mean? What does this mean for in terms of the SDGs? What does this mean in terms of business now? So th these papers, the, these manuscripts are again peer reviewed, blind peer reviewed, but we allow for more more visibility and, 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 and more air for ideas for papers that intersect with policy, would intersect with research, with education. We we, we accept papers on uh, case studies, right? So if you want to do an e-commerce paper on select a country, for example, again like Uganda, this is a case study on an e-commerce in Uganda on a company that's mid and small business moving to becoming a mid-sized business or a large business and they realize that e-commerce is the future yet there are challenges with e-commerce a b and c yet the future is heading to e-commerce and it also heads with how do we move forward with with creating equality for women um in and in, 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 in countries and and the aspects of financial access you, you can see where this is can go you have more more room more ability to come up with some creative, creative ideas with GISP. Um, and we publish it, we print and online, and we have actually a call for paper with uh, my colleague and Aliyah Pastran um, on, on, on sustainability, right? So, and here are some of the topics that we're looking at here. You know, finance, ecosystems, policy and economics, the UN SDGs, innovation technology, women, founder-owned enterprises. So a little bit more flexibility in that sense. And we know the aim, good, another question, no, JSPM aim and scope will always remain the same. Again, I said we are very um, loyal and grounded to the aim and scope of JSPM. It will remain the same. We're always looking at that one way we can deviate a little bit here and there, allow for some, for, you know, some ide new ideas here. We have special issues, right? That's where special issues come in. We allow for that, and this is exciting here. Right, but that's one of the intentions we did. Just right, we felt just allows us for more for more creativity, for more innovation. Okay, so uh, you know you're going to get 800. So you know that there's 800 submissions coming in for JSPM, and they're going to be very competitive. And you know that the same standard and qualities and and and, and due diligence we're going to do for JSPM and JISP. But JISP is new. JISP is, is, is allows for this growth. And you can see once you submit with JISP and you submit with JSPM, you get to feel the, 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 what I call the family touch of what is needed here. And you'll be like, oh, I'll, you know, every year or every, you know, two years, I'm going to submit a paper, one for JSPM and one for JISP, one for JSPM and one for JISP. And you start building your repertoire, start building your portfolio with us here. You know, I tell you, I had stories in the past, people call me saying, I'm in. You know, last time I submitted to JSPM was three years ago. I like what you're doing. I'm submitting a paper next week. <laughs> I'd be like, great, you know, that's fantastic, right? So we're, we're, looking, for, we're looking for the human touch. And we, that's one of the main reasons, everybody, that we do these webinars. And I made sure as, manage, as managing editor is that once a month, we have a JSBM session, live session. So Mohammed, Rachel, you can come and talk to me directly. You can ask me questions like this, right? We do the same thing with pitch gist that you get to meet the editor, the associate editors, once a month. You come and talk to us live. No more emails, no more waiting for us to respond to you in two paragraphs. We have a conversation. You wanna to talk to us more? You can say, can I have a meeting to talk a little bit about this idea? That's, that's what I call the human touch. And I think we need more and more of this every day here. Um, any other, um, I see some other questions here. Um, Okay, and uh, now let me switch to stop share. Let me see if I can, because it's a little bit easier to see the chat section here. Um, any other comments or questions for everybody? What do you all think? I'm curious now. I talked a lot, right? What do you all think here? Anybody want to say anything? Let me know and I can open up the um, mic for them. I see Antonio from Italy here. Hi, Antonio. Hi. Oh, hi, Vicky. Um, Vicky, you want to jump in and say something? I'll, I'll, I'll jump and make you allow to talk. Here you go. So I'm putting Vicky on the spot here. Um, okay, so um, wait, maybe she doesn't have a mic here. Um, Ricardo, you're good. Mohammed, you're good.
Okay. All right. Well, and that's really it. I don't want to keep you longer than this here. So I, I, I welcome you all uh, to submit to both journals, JSBM and JISP. Um, it's okay, Antonio, no, no problem. Um, uh, to submit to both journals here. And we are excited to have you. We are excited to have you as part of the ICSB family as well. Thank you for joining us here. Rachel, did I answer all your questions? Are you planning to submit? Um, and then if you, if you have any more questions or comments, um, please um, do not hesitate to contact um, Eric, Katya, me, or Hannah as well with any questions or comments you have. And we'll be delighted to, to work with you extensively. And, 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 and we go from there. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Wonderful. All right, everybody, please stay safe. Um, I look forward to, to seeing you all again. It's been a pleasure to having you here today's session. I want to I wanna thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.